Victoria. Victoria Thai. Victoria Thai. And when did you come to Austin? Came in 2007, so it's almost 10 years now. I liked it. You know, I came in 2002 once, and I had a sense that I was going to be living here. Uh, I really loved how green it was. Um, people were pretty open, and um, I just had a sense that I was going to love living here. So um, that informed a large part of that decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the question we're asking people like you in these interviews is, what, what do you find in Austin that you would describe as kind or that would describe Austin as a center of kindness? Oh, when I first came, now I'm from California, and people are not so kind, not so nice. So, for instance, I and remember I had come from Mexico, a walking kind of, a walking culture. So I was walking by the highway, and no less than eight cars would stop and asked if anything was wrong, and if I needed a ride. I mean, no less than eight. And at the time, um, anybody who had a you know, the flashing emergency lights, people would stop and say, can I help you? Can I get you gas or what's wrong? And that just, that just blew my mind at the time. Um, I think I once lost a wallet and, you know, I, I had about a hundred dollars in there and change. And I was so worried. Um, I knew where I had left it. And I said, I called that gas station. I said, I'm so sorry. I, I left it, and um, if you give it back to me, you know, take all the cash you want. And, because, you know, they would have, they might have done it anyway. Now I'm just giving them permission to without making it awkward. Uh, but, no, they said, I'm going to express ship it back to you with the address on your license. And they did not take one penny. And, you know, um, that was unusual behavior for me, for Americans, to do so. I was just, I had offered, plainly offered, take all the cash, please get me back my wallet. And they, it was at my house the next day. Yeah. And um, um, speaking of it, you know, it's interesting, all the responses I got on Facebook, all the Californians were like, oh, I'm glad you got your money back. You know, they, they it was very self-centered. Mm -hmm. And, um, other places were like, oh, well, I'm glad your information wasn't compromised. But there's also people who just saw this as an act of decency, an act of civility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you become, have you come to expect that kind of thing out of Austin? No, 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 I don't. I mean, that was, those episodes still stand out in my mind as mm -hmm. exceptional. Um, and I have a couple more stories, but I, no, I don't expect people to behave in a certain way because there's so many people from out of town now that it's hard to kind of put a standard on that. So, so us real Texans have a responsibility to, to shepherd the newcomers through to learn how to be kind. You know, those is, it, it's interesting because those are more tangible qualities of kindness. But when I first came and I was drawn to Austin, what I remember was that was the first time I spoke to someone I felt listened to. And it was, I felt listened to. I felt, said, people here are really good at listening. And it's not something that you can really put a quality on until you've grown up in a noisy place and never felt heard. Is that true? still true? You still feel that? The opposite. So now I've gotten better at listening. I've noticed that um, it changed me for the better as a human being. And when I go back to California, then I think everyone is absolutely rude that, <laughs> <laughs> that I really can't get used to that. Yeah. So, when you think about uh, kindness, well, we think that kindness is kind of reveals a person's consciousness, their level of consciousness. Is that something you ever consider that the consciousness re is revealed by kindness? 
That's an interesting question. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people who are nice, but it reveals a, a self-preservation. The, the motive for people being overly nice or it's, it's compensating something else. Um, now, it's also true that people who are more conscious um, tend to be more altruistic. And there's a big difference in, that I see between the two, between one being overly polite and maybe kind but in an artificial way versus one that is uh, genuine. Um, I participate in a lot of um, near-death experience groups and these people have a very elevated consciousness because they may have died multiple times and they kind of come back with that awareness that um, we are not our bodies and that we are quite connected on levels that we can't perceive. Uh, and the, the kindness there has no ulterior motive at all. Um, and, you know, it, it just has this very strong sense that they are aware that they are going to be the recipient of their kind actions towards others. It's really fascinating. With people who have near-death experiences, there's no strategy or there's no um, calculating aspect to their kindness whatsoever. It's just very much, you know, very innocent, almost like whatever occurs to them at the moment. And it's, it's, it can be s small gestures, but they don't, they, it's just spontaneous. So it comes from the heart. And it, it, real kindness really all, always is spontaneous. It's not, you know, uh, it's not overlaid with culture or expectations. Whereas uh, I've also met a lot of people who seem really nice, but, you, you know, um, it's not spontaneous as it's supposed to do, or I should. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what's the main thing you've learned from all this? A huge learning experience was that uh, people who were nice or kind, but it didn't come authentically, it backfires. A lot of people get sick from doing that. And... Um, it didn't serve anybody. It didn't serve. It didn't necessarily serve the recipient because they could kind of perceive that kind of um, that kind of overture of maybe uh, maybe they're trying to manipulate a situation or maybe versus the kindness that uh, or the nice the the, the good heartedness of people who have gained a certain wisdom about it. It's very clean. And those people also tend to be very healthy. And you know what's really funny is that those people also can eat whatever they want and enjoy life. You know, it's interesting that people who are really particular about their diets and then kind of sort of nice but in this uh, contorted way, they're not really that healthy as people. And... Um, and since I can feel other people's pain um, quite a lot, I can really sense, oh, okay, you know, this is, this is kind of like a, what do you call it? It, 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 it's a pseudo solution that creates more problems, if that makes sense, versus the kind that is pure and clean, then it, it creates a vibrant health for themselves, yeah. Yeah, and it's just a simpler life, you know, it's not, so overthought. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Victoria, for being here. You're welcome.